We got Houston ranked third in the top 25 and one. Can you get that high with me? I might be able to get that high with you. Houston's got a lot to be uh, pretty optimistic about, even though you ran down at the top of the show uh, how much production they're losing. Uh, but the fact that they're bringing back Marcus Sasser, who if you really look across college hoops going into this next season and we talk about the players that are expected to be the most productive, the most valuable, the most prominent, a majority of those names are big men. Uh, there's a chance that in terms of overall value, Marcus Sasser, there's a chance Marcus Sasser could be the most valuable guard in the entire country, uh, provided he's able to return fully healthy, 100%. Uh, they'll certainly have a they'll have a shot. Houston starting five will set up like it'll be Sasser, Shed, Tremont, Mark, uh, Walker, and then Reggie Cheney, uh, Jairus Walker, Reggie Cheney, Cheney will start at the five. The best three defenders are Shed, Sasser. And Cheney is almost he's he's a very high level pick and roll defender. Uh, he has tremendous feet, bull in a china shop type aggression. He's quick. He's nasty. He is the centerpiece to Houston basically being able to to trap every pick and roll, trap every post touch. He's the nucleus of the defense there. So they'll again be a lead on defense. I would have to believe they basically have been. Um, since uh, Samson's been there at least the past five seasons. They were eighth overall in defensive efficiency last season, and they got into the tournament as a five seed. Remember, we said they were under we, – we, we said they were under because we knew they were better than a five seed, but from a resume standpoint, it wasn't a surprise to see Houston on the five line. We just knew in that team's DNA it was not a five. It was, it was really probably a, probably a three, but nonetheless, it, 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 it proved us uh, uh, right when it beat Arizona – in the Sweet 16, and then lost in a low-scoring affair to Villanova in the Elite Eight. But overall, yes, a wonderful season, 32-6 and six for, for Kelvin Sampson uh, to, again, uh, you know, uh, just real quick on this GP before we touch more on the team. I just... Five years running, it's been it's – been, a reliable program and Samson has brought prestige back to it. You know, Houston was a top 10 outfit in the sport from the late sixties into the mid eighties, right? Then the program fell off the map and toiled into relevance for the better part of three decades. And I hope this fact doesn't get lost as the years go on, but I mean, Samson got this program back to a final four, a final freaking four for Houston. That was unthinkable five years ago. It happened in 2020 in COVID in the indie bubble, there was the Gonzaga UCLA epic and then Baylor beating Gonzaga to win his first national championship. So Houston gets a little bit overlooked in that, but it's still remarkable. Houston went back to a final four. Um, it's it's uh, it's unbelievable. Samson is two wins away from his 700th career victory at Houston. He's one win away from 200 with the Cougs. He's 199 and 70 since getting there in 2014. And in the past five seasons, Houston has averaged average 28.6 wins per season and won 10 NCAA tournament games. No reason to believe that won't continue in 22, 23 with Houston operating comfortably as a top 10 team in the sport. Yeah. I, I, if I remember correctly, Kelvin sort of mentioned this either pregame Villanova or postgame Villanova, but you know, I, obviously Houston was one of the best college basketball programs in the eighties. And you know, Villanova won a national title in the 80s. Uh, but Kelvin said something along the lines of, you know, Villanova never went away. You know, Villanova, had, not to take away from anything Jay Wright's done, but like Villanova has always been good. It never, you know, went to the bottom. You know, Houston went to the bottom. You know, I, I was in that building uh, multiple times before Kelvin got there. Um, and it's like, building was awful. Nobody yeah, was, was there. Decrepit building. One of the worst facilities uh, at that level of the sport. Yeah. Now it's one of the great environments in college basketball because they've upgraded the facility and because Kelvin has, you know, built uh, one of the top programs in the country. And I, I, that's what Houston is right now. It is, it is one of the most reliably great college basketball programs in the country. You know, they have finished in the top 20 at Ken Palm in each of the past five seasons in the top 15 each of the past four seasons, in the top five each of the past two seasons. Last five seasons, they're 144 and 30 overall, 72 and 17 in the AAC. Three conference titles, again, five top 20 finishes at Ken Palm. 
um, went to the final four in 2021 elite eight in 2022. And that's among the reasons I'm very comfortable believing in them being great again, not asking them to do anything that they haven't already done. I'm, I'm asking them to be one of the best teams in the country. That's what they've been a, at least each of the past two seasons. And on paper, I think you can make the argument that this roster he has heading into this season might be the best roster he's ever had at Houston. Like Marcus Sasser, he was going to far and away be their best player last season. Um, he was averaging 17.7 points, shooting 43.7% from three through 12 games. He looked like a first-team All-American. In fact, I will argue, I believe, when we do All-American teams, that he should be a preseason first-team All-American. That's what he looked like while he was playing last season for one of the best teams in the country. Shut it down just before Christmas, toe injury. But now he's back, and I'm expecting him to, to pick up uh, right where he left off. Tremont Mark was really good as a freshman, but only played seven games last season because of shoulder surgery. He's back. So with Sasser, Mark, and Jamal Shedd, Houston's got three guys who were you know double-digit uh, scorers for last season's team, even if two of those guys had their seasons cut short. And they're adding Jairus Walker, like a six foot eight, top 15 prospect in the class of 2022. He's probably, you know, a four at this level, but just an incredible physical specimen. Like I was watching videos of him last night um, from IMG Academy, which is where he attended. And like his teammates were consistently wowed by him. They were like, this guy does things that, you know, normal people can't do that, that the rest of us just can't do. So I, I think he's going to be terrific. You mentioned Cheney. He's a role player, but he's a really good role player. And that's all he needs to be. He started nine games last season. He'll fill that role left open by the departure of Josh Carlton. Like I, I, Houston, obviously the favorite in the AAC. And I think uh, a, a legitimate candidate to be back in the final four for the second time in a three-year span. Viable Final Four contender, viable national title contender, Houston. And again, like I, I do appreciate how we're doing these, uh, you know, quickie little twenty-minute episodes talking about the teams that are either interesting or most relevant because it's just a, it's just a, a tap on the shoulder, a reminder. Like this, Kelvin Sampson has made it normal that we're talking about Houston in these terms. That we're doing a podcast episode dedica dedicated to the Cougars. But anyone that has followed this sport. For at least the at least just the past ten years, let alone if you're you know a bit older and have been doing it since the mid two thousands, early two thousands, nineties, eighties, even the OGs that can go back to the seventies. Like the idea, like this was not, this was not how this was uh, expected to go, even to this level. When Houston hired Sampson, who of course we're not gonna you know go you know recount all this stuff, but you know he, Sampson was highly accomplished. Indiana, Oklahoma, and still violations. Um, and certainly broke rules, uh, knowingly broke rules and faced punishments for that and went over to the NBA. And then Houston decides we're going to hire this guy. He has he is the ideal of what you could dream to be kind of along the line. Similarly, with some trouble with Bruce Pearl at Auburn, but Auburn did the same deal. It's like we know this guy's a great coach. He can take us to where we hope to be and maybe even beyond. And, and Houston, I mean, Houston has become as viable and consistent of a member in the American as any program that's in the conference or was in the conference, that was not – Houston was like sixth or seventh on the list when the American was formed, right? That includes UConn, which won a title under an AAC banner in 2014. Uh, this is Houston's last season in the conference before heading off to the Big 12 with fellow uh, American rent payers, Cincinnati and UCF. Of course, BYU is also going to the Big 12 via – the WCC. So this will be the final go around there. I fully anticipate Houston to win, uh, to win comfortably. We might need to do a win total again before we, uh, before we sneak out of here, but yes, because of their three guard attack, GP viable national title contender, you've got them third. Uh, I'll have this team definitely in my preseason top five. There's no doubt about it. The shed Sasser Mark three guard attack uh, is a big reason for that. And yes, uh, I do think that Cheney will be, uh, a big time step up player in a in a, in a greatly enhanced role because of what he does defensively. And then I guess got to mention three guys off the bench: uh, Terrence Arsenault, Juwan Roberts, uh, Ramon Walker Jr. Those will probably be one, two, three off the bench. Terrence Arsenault I saw play last year uh, in the summer on the recruiting circuit. He is Houston's best pro prospect. I am going to predict that when Houston starts its first game in the NCAA tournament, whatever seed that is, one, two, three, or four, Arsenal will start in that game. He will not start to start the season. He is a very fun prospect. He is a kind of player that has that vintage Houston toughness, but he will have a, a, a kind of sizzle to his game 
that uh, I don't think Houston's actually had since since Sampson has been there. Sasser will still be the best player, uh, but I could see Arsenal growing into a top three uh, go-to guy on offense specifically. Uh, you will enjoy him, and he is the guy that when we talk about Houston as top five capability, it's not just the starting five. Roberts is good. Walker's good. But it will be Arsenal who could very well grow into the best freshman sixth man in the country. Eventually, he won't be a sixth man. I just I anticipate he will grow into being a starting level player by the time we get to March. 